Up till now, each variable that we create can store one value at a time per variable. But what if we need to work with lists of data? In other words, I need to keep track of several people or several numbers and I need to store them in such a way that I, it doesn't matter if I have two or 10 or 100, I can kind of keep them together and move them all around and use them in my application as a list, as a grouping of related values. In that case, I want to create an array. And so let's start by creating a new file called arrays.js. And first of all, it's basically, an array is basically a variable that can hold many different values. And so we can uh, declare a variable and initialize its value like so. Uh, so here we'll do let a equals, and here we're gonna use an opening and closing square brace or bracket. And then I'm gonna give it a series of values. Each value will be separated by a comma. Four, eight, um, let's say 15, 16, 23, and uh, 42. All right, and so now I have an array of those values. Now these are just numeric values. What if I wanted to create an array of string values? I can do something similar. In fact, I can use any data type inside of here uh, that's allowable in JavaScript, and we'll see some examples of that a little bit later. But I might want David, Eddie, Alex, and uh, Michael. All right. And then what if I want to get one of the, the values? I can just do console.log. All right. Inside of here, I'm going to use the variable name. So in this case, I'll use A. And then I'll want to provide a index to retrieve one of the elements. So each of these is an element of the array. And I want to use an index, a numeric value that that allows me to get at one of those elements inside of the array. Uh, the indexes are zero based. That trips up beginners sometimes. Uh, you, for example, to get at the number four, the first element in the array, I would use the index zero. If I want the second item in the array, the second element of the array, I would need to use the index one and so on. So to get at it, I'm going to use A and then right next to the A, square brackets, and then I'm gonna give it an index. So here we'll grab the first value and then I'll grab the second value. All right. And then I wanna do show you how console.log will just print out all of the values for you nicely if you just wanna give it the name of the, uh, of the array itself, the, the variable itself. So let's save our work and um, we'll go uh, node arrays. All right, so you can see the first element of the array at index zero gives us the value four. The second element of the array at index one gives us the value eight. All right, hope you can see the correlation there. Or if I just wanna print out all the values in the array, I can just provide the variable name that contains the array and it will print them out all for me just like I have kind of here when I actually initialized our array variable. All right, let's comment this out. Now that is how we access individual elements. What if I wanted to change or set the value of one of the elements? The same would, would work. So in this case, I would say, for example, a zero and I would set it equal to seven like so. And so then we can just do console.log uh, like so, and then we run our application. Now you see the first element of the array has been changed from four to seven because that's how we can access a single element and assign it a new value. All right. All right. So um, what about these mysterious, uh, these mysterious arrays? What is their data type? So uh, let's do console dot log type of a and we can see that it's of type object and we'll talk about the object data type later because there's a lot more to it than just being able to create arrays but it's a little bit more advanced at this point we'll get into it soon just keep in mind that an array isn't a data type of itself it is 
a type of something called object, and we'll talk about objects later. All right. Um, so the other thing that's important to remember is that a array can in, can include elements of different data types. So let me just do uh, let C equals. Um, we'll start it with four, and then we'll do Alex, and then we'll do true. All right. So we've used three different data types right there, and we can just do uh, node arrays. Oh, I need to actually do a console.log C. There we go. There we go. All right, so you can see that a single uh, array can hold different data types. There's no restriction there. Let's comment that out. What happens if I try to access an element that with an with a index that does not exist? So let's do console dot log and I happen to know that the B has four different elements in it, four names. And let me try to access the fifth element by using the index four. And this will be undefined. So just like a variable without any value um, assigned to it is undefined, so is a element of an array undefined if we don't give it a value. Now, I can also just programmatically determine the number of elements in an array by using a special property called length. So I can do console.log a dot, and remember the dot is the member access operator. So arrays are objects, and this particular object has a special property called length, which will give me the number of elements in that array. So I would expect to see, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the question is, is it going to give us six, the actual number, uh, or is it going to give it, us to it in a zero-based fashion? And the answer to that is that it will give us the actual number, not zero-based. And this will come into, uh, into play a little bit later when we use the length of an array and we uh, uh, iterate through each element of the array to print them to screen when we learn about looping. All right, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, there's a lot of strange things that you can do with, with arrays, and some of them are not always intuitive. Like, for example, if I wanted to just randomly create a new element, so in this case, I'm going to create, what, the... Um, uh, use the index 10, which means this would add an 11th element to the array. What happens with all of the elements between uh, where we left off? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 6 through 11, what will we get? So let's just assign this to 77. And then I want to do a console.log of A. And then I want to do a console.log and A dot length, like we just learned about, and kind of see what happens here. And then let's run that. All right, so we can see that it prints out four, five, six, seven, or I'm sorry, four, eight, 15, 16, 23, 42. And then it says there's four empty items and then there's 77. And it says that there's 11, uh, there's 11 items, 11 elements in this array because we filled up the 10th index or index 10 with a value. So it will create essentially what's called a sparse array. And that means that there are empty elements inside. Now this isn't usually the way that you want to work with arrays if you need to add new values because it's not as safe. We're inadvertently creating elements with nothing in them. There's a safer way to go about this using some additional built-in uh, functions of the array. And so if I wanted to add that value and add it to the end of the array, no matter how many elements are currently in the array, I could use the push method. And so I say, hey, I want to push the number 77 to the end of the existing array. So let's, um, let's copy this and paste it here. And then if I wanted to remove it, I can use a method called pop. So uh, this function pop will remove the last element of the array. In fact, I can call it several times. 
to keep removing elements of the array. And here we'll just print out what the end result is, just like we did previously. So now this should put some fireworks uh, into our terminal window. So you can see that using push in line number 29, I was able to add the number 77 to the end of the existing array. Uh, and that gives me seven total elements. Now I call pop three times. It removes 77, 42, and 23, leaving us with just four elements in our array. Okay. So we're going to continue to use arrays. They're a great way to to keep lists of things together and accessible, and they'll become even more important, again, as we learn how to loop through arrays and uh, to evaluate each element. We can even use arrays to hold on to other things like, like objects and functions, and we'll learn about some advanced use cases uh, with arrays a little bit later. All right, so that's all I have to say about arrays. Let's move on and start uh, looking into some things that are beyond the absolute basics. We'll start moving and talking about functions. All right, see you there. Thanks.